Hey everyone, so on today's episode, we're going to discuss what if On Her Majesty's Secret Service was not George Lazenby's first James Bond film. So, George Lazenby for me has always been, he hasn't been bad, but he was never like great. Obviously, we've only have one film to judge by, which is On Her Majesty's Secret Service. And I find his performance in it, it's good. It's not great. It's not outstanding or mesmerizing, but it is good. It is serviceable. And it's also, by that count, in one of the greatest Bond films of all time. I've always had a very mixed relationship with On Her Majesty's Secret Service. There was a time when I was very much younger, I would have said it was the worst James Bond film. I didn't really like it at all. Now, for those of you who've been with me for a long time, you might remember that I used to grow up watching the James Bond films with my grandfather. He was an absolute massive fan of the Bond series, like me, and I think a lot of his thoughts I sort of mimicked because he really hated this movie. He hated the, like, hypnotic girls plot of the whole thing. It just never really worked with him. And I feel I also share that at the time. I always slightly felt that it was a bit unfair that George Lazenby's first film was on a Majesty's Secret Service. It's a massive, big, epic drama. And you really do need an actor of great caliber, I think, in that film. But at the same time, it did solidify him in as Bond in probably one of the greatest James Bond films of all time. And it's probably thanks to that film that we remember George Lazenby so highly. But what if On Her Majesty's Secret Service wasn't his first James Bond film? How well would he have been remembered? What would his first James Bond film have been like? How would that affect the timeline of the Bond film franchise? And that's the question of today I want to ask in this video. But before we get into this any further, can I ask if you haven't already, do give us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to reach a 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year, so it'd be really great if you help us. And stick around all the way to the end, where we're going to also discuss how, if Lazenby's first film wasn't on a Majesty's Secret Service, would have affected, potentially, the Battle of the Bonds. But without that, let's get into a bit of pre-prep before we go off this tangent. So to prep the timeline tangent here, we're going to imagine that Sean Connery didn't finish at the end of You Only Live Twice, and he continued to star in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and then he decides to leave the franchise. The film is exactly the same with the director and tonal direction with Peter Hunt, and the film is an absolute massive success. It's considered one of the best Bond films of all time. Sean Connery's best performance as James Bond. Heck, let's add in he also gets a nomination, potentially a win at the BAFTAs for best leading actor in a film. So now branching off into this timeline, we are now going to imagine that after Sean Connery's left, they've done the big search, they've chosen George Lazenby, and they're gonna move forward with Diamonds Are Forever. I think the first question we've got to ask is now, how different Diamonds Are Forever would be. Now, if I'm absolutely honest, Diamonds Are Forever is not one of my, shall we say, favorite all-time James Bond films. I find it a bit clunky, I feel it's a bit inspiring, and there are just real big moments of it that just really sort of slightly turn me off, and one of them has to be the location. I've never found Las Vegas to be the real sort of feeling of a Bond location. But one of the things that really kept Diamonds Are Forever together and working and going forward is the fact that it did have Sean Connery's performance in the center of it. So when you take that away and replace it with George Lazenby, you, I think you're really looking into a big problem here. The fact of the matter is George Lazenby acted his way into the franchise and then onto playing Bond. So I still think he would have given a similar performance that he did on, on Her Majesty's Secret Service but in Dimes Are Forever. But I can't help the film would have also been very, very different. Now, for me, I think the biggest change that they would have done to Dimes Are Forever is actually the removal in the story of Ernst Stavrel Blofeld. I think after the end of On Her Majesty's Secret Service, ending the Sean Connery era and Bond of the 60s, I think Dimes Are Forever would have had an original villain similar to what they did with Live and Let Die with Roger Moore. I also feel at this point, I really should say that I think Dimes Are Forever would actually have been made an improvement by the removal of Ernst Stavrel Blofeld. One of the big issues we Bond fans I generally find have with Diamonds Are Forever 
is following on from On Her Majesty's Secret Service. There isn't really much of Bond going out for revenge. There isn't that real sort of connection with, this is the man who basically helped kill my wife. And there isn't that sort of feeling it, because they were trying to distance themselves from what they consider the bit of disaster of the previous film. I think, like Live and Let Die, this would have been a more of a standalone adventure for George Lazenby to start off with. And on that note, I'm gonna say right here, despite what I've said, I think this would have been a much fairer film for George Lazenby to start at. Now, don't get me wrong, it would be incredibly hard and really, really tough following On Her Majesty's Secret Service with this being your first opening film. And to follow that film, no matter what you do, you are going to be said you're not as good as the previous one, in my opinion. But I think people would have potentially accepted George Lazenby maybe a bit more, or would they? Honor Magic Secret Service is, without doubt, as we've mentioned previously, one of the best stories. And it's great that George Lazenby got the chance for his first film to be this great story. But I think if you gave him something like Diamonds Are Forever and setting off in a complete new direction in a new era, it would have maybe landed maybe a bit better with public audiences than what it actually did. Now, Diamonds Are Forever was a massive success, and that is probably down a lot to the fact that Sean Connery returned to the role. But this film, I think, with George Lazenby, probably would nowadays, we would look back on it probably a bit more favourably, a bit more happier, because unfortunately we compare Diamonds Are Forever to the glory years of Sean Connery and it's still just, let's be fair, it doesn't add up. Now in this point, again, in this what if, we have to go again in two different tangents of where we could go. The first option to consider is what if George Lazenby, like he did in our own timeline, decided he just wanted to do one and leave. The other option is obviously, what if George Lazenby stayed on and did more Bond films? Now, the first option I mentioned there, it's very easy to basically summarise here. The fact of the matter is, he only did one film, it's not considered one of the greatest Bond films of all time. George Lazenby is probably a bit more forgotten, still loved and appreciated like he is today, but not still as well known or respected in the Bond community. And very simply, after that, they hire Roger Moore, they do Live and Let Die, and they continue on and the timeline is restored back to its normal working order. Now the second tangent if what if George Lazenby stayed on to do more Bond films, that's where it gets very interesting. Now we know that producers wanted George Lazenby to stay on for seven films and let's just say for instance he did in this tangent of this alternate timeline, well that perfectly leads up to the Battle of the Bonds. Now, for those of you who might not know, the Battle of Bonds was a battle that took place in 1983 between the Bond film Octopussy and the rival Kevin McClory remake of Thunderball, Never Say Never Again, starring Sean Connery. Obviously, when you look back in history, Octopussy becomes the clear winner of this battle, which just proves that it's not just Sean Connery that made the Bond franchise what it is. But in this alternate timeline, you now have George Lazenby, the true successor of Connery, against the original Sean Connery James Bond. What would have happened? Again, taking Octopussy for what it is and never say never again for what it is, I still think Octopussy starring George Lazenby would have most certainly won. And I think it would have solidified the same principle as I mentioned, that Bond isn't just Sean Connery. There are multiple things, the music, the locations, the production, the people behind and in front of the camera that make the Bond franchise what it is but I think it would have been a much more interesting battle of the Bonds. I think it would have been maybe even potentially closer than what the ending original number was, but my God, I would have loved to have been there and be all around all the hype and drama. So overall, now looking at the fact that George Lazenby did Diamonds Are Forever all the way to Octopussy, what would we have thought about of his tenure? I think very strongly we would have looked at him saying he's all right, he's just not as good as Sean Connery, but as time grew on, his acting improved and the quality of his films went up and down a bit. But when you think about it, we could have had the George Lazenby Live and Let Die, The Spy Who Loved Me, The Moonraker, the For Your Eyes Only George Lazenby versions of Bond. That does actually excite me of what the potential it could have been. I think George Lazenby would have become the face and the actor of James Bond for a whole new generation, like what Sean Connery was for a whole generation and what Timothy Dalton and Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig did later on. But in the end, what will happen after Octopussy? Well, they get another actor in to play Bond for a view to kill. I'm going to say, for instance, here, it is Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton ends up doing three Bond films, a view to kill, the living daylight and license kill. And then it moves on to Brosnan and the timeline continues again. 
Well, everyone, that is my what if George Lazenby wasn't the actor in Honor Majesty's Secret Service. But I want to know, what do you think about this alternate timeline? Do you think it would have been great to see? Do you glad it ended up being Roger Moore in these films? I want to know. Comment down below and tell me your whole thoughts about this. Everyone, don't forget again to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And join us next time where in the next Bond Geek episode, we will discuss why Tom Hardy could be an amazing James Bond. That's it, everyone, for me. Goodbye.